Welcome to this very special transmission about Dhumavati, the seventh Mahavidya. And we've spoken many times about the Dasha Mahavidya. In Bengali, we have a stotra, Kali Tara Mahavidya, Shoroshi Bhubaneshwari Bhairavi Chhinda Mastacha Vidya Dhuma Bhutisthata, Bagula Shiddha Vidya Cha Matungi, Kamalatika Eta Dasha Mahavidya Shiddha Vidya Prakritita. Again, before I begin, I'm going to stress on the same fact that uh, the Dasha Mahavidyas are not ten separate goddesses. Understand the fundamental difference, understand the, the premise before we begin the discussion. Okay, so the thing is that the, the Dasha Mahavidyas are ten points of the same mother matrix. If we don't understand this, then we'll be caught in duality. Because you know, who do we worship? Do we worship this? Do we worship uh, this person or that person? You know, are we more attracted to Kali? If we worship Kali, can we worship uh, Chinnamasta? Can we worship Dhumavati? You know, all these kinds of conflicts, hello, all these kinds of conflicts, they pop up in our uh, mind. So the mind is a monkey brain. We've got to silence it. So let's get the concepts correct. The Dasha Mahavidyas are not ten different goddesses. The goddess in her infinite glory is impenetrable to the human intellect. Impenetrable. Okay? We cannot penetrate the mystery that is the mother matrix. So with our human intellect, with our human understanding, we can try to uh, understand her, compre comprehend her glory, her magnitude, by discovering her through these ten points. Okay, ten points. The, the infinite points. The goddess in her infinite glory has infinite archetypes present in her. Everything that ever existed and that ever will exist, exists in her. But we cannot know that. For, you know, we see the world as is, is a 3D. We don't even see beyond that. We hear nothing of what's really going on because we hear less than 1% of the acoustic spectrum. We see less than 1% of the electromagnetic spectrum. So here we are dwarfed by the five senses because you know, evolution has deemed it uh, you know, not necessary for us to go into all those kinds of uh, uh, you know, light frequencies and sound frequencies. So thereby, the, the easiest way to understand this is that the Dasha Mahavidyas is 10 points of knowing that one mother matrix. There is no division, there is no duality. That the duality pervades our mind because we are built with duality. We see everything in contrast, right? That's why in our universe, there is no uh, one pole. Magnetic poles are south and north pole. Again, duality. Yeah, right? Uh, electrons need protons to create matter. Again, duality. So before we begin the discussion, are we clear that the 10, the Dasha Mahavidyas, are not ten different goddesses. They are the emanation of that infinite, incomprehensible mother matrix who we seek to understand with love, with devotion, as the Dasha Mahavidyas. For is Dhumavati different to Kali? No, she is not. Is Bagala different to Lalita Tripura Sundari? No, she is not. Oh yes, I am very excited because today is Dhumavati Jayanti. Okay, Ashtami Tithi has already started from 7 a.m. in Bombay, 7.20 or, or some, something. I have already mentioned that on my post. But today, beginning till tomorrow, Ashtami Tithi lands. And this is Dhumavati Jayanti. It's a very charged day. Charged day for sadhana. Charged day to do something, you know. And today, I am off in the night to do something very special. Please wish me luck. For uh, I am going to go off and do 
Dhumavati Sadhana. Again, Dhumavati Sadhana is not done at home. It either needs to be done at a crema crematorium, like uh, you know the Shonal grounds, or it needs to be done in a secluded forest. Yes, yes. Shub Dhumavati Jayanti, for I shall dissect to you the archetype of the great grandmother Dhumavati. Today is not a day like any other. Today the the energy is crackling with Dhumavati's electrical energy. Okay, she electrical energy, she's everything and she's nothing. I'll get to that. So the Dhumavati is the great grandmother spirit or the grandmother spirit, all right? And uh, it is, it's said that she's associated with all things inauspicious. This couldn't be further from the truth because uh, Dhumavati is actually, she encompasses within her all things that are auspicious and she, and in, inauspicious, and she propels us to look beyond the obvious duality, the obvious, uh, you know, comprehensible right and wrong, ugly, beautiful, go beyond that. So says Ganapati Muni in Uma Sahasranama, perceived as the void, as the dissolved form of consciousness. When all beings are dissolved in sleep, in the Supreme Brahman, okay, the Absolute, the, the impenetrable mystery, Parabrahm, having swallowed the entire creation, the seer poets call her the most glorious and the eldest, Thumavati. She exists in the forms of sleep, lack of memory, illusion and dullness in the creatures immersed in the illusions of the world. But amongst the yogis, she becomes a power that destroys all thoughts. Indeed, Samadhi itself. Very profound. She destroys all thoughts, all sensations, indeed Samadhi itself. This can appear counterintuitive for what are we doing sadhana? For Samadhi, right? Nirvikalpa Samadhi. But Dhumavati in her power dissolves the very act of Samadhi. Isn't that profound? I mean, pro found we are talking about a power a cosmic power that destroys all all uh, illusions that destroys everything even the act of nirvikalpa samadhi itself right now dhumavati is the eldest amongst the goddesses and she teaches us the ultimate lessons of birth and death she reveals the Mariana Trench of the unknown. You know, Mariana Trench is the most uh, deep point on earth, right? The Mariana Trench in the ocean. She, re she reveals to us the very depths of the unknown, the Mariana Trench of the unknown. Dhum, Dhum, Dhumavati, Swaha. Dhum, Dhum, Dhumavati, Swaha. Dhum, Dhum, Dhumavati, Swaha. So the U is actually uh, more accented. How? Dhum, Dhum, Dhumavati, Swaha. Dhum, Dhum, Dhumavati Swaha. This mantra is not to be done in a place of residence or, um, you know, in your office or somewhere. This mantra is to be done in cremation grounds or in abandoned forests, for instance, right by that lake. 
if you look right by that lake in the depth of night, you can sit there with your asana and you can chant Dhoom, Dhoom, Dhoomavati Swaha. Gently. Job is done either in Vekhari or Madhyama or Pasyanti. So ultimately the job, the true job happens in Pasyanti. Okay, when it is happening in silence in your mind. So take a deep breath. Relax all the tensions in your body, in your mind. And surrender. Uh, yes, yes, it can be, but not directly inside the temple. Go outside. There is a banyan tree or an old, some kind of old tree. Sit right there. Take your Rudraksha and say, Dhoom, 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 Avati, Swaha. It's perfect time to do it today, tonight, right? Check for um, Dhoom, Avati, Jayanti timings in your local area. Check your Panchang, okay? So we've all got the mantra which is Dhum Dhum Dhumavati Swaha. All right. And uh, we pay obeisance to all our grandmothers, all the great, uh, you know, great, great grandmothers, the great grandmothers that, that have brought us into existence, that have carried forth the eggs that have shaped uh, us into this, you know, this, uh, uh, state of uh, matter that we exist in through their menstrual cycles. Let us bow down in reverence before the great grandmother Dhumavati herself. Now when we talk about Dhumavati, people are very scared. But people do not understand that the Dasha Mahavidyas are, is, it, they are not ten different goddesses, they are one goddess. So if you can pray to Lalita Tripura Sundari, there is no reason why you should not be able to pray to, to Dumavati. Okay? But there are many rumors because Tantra is shrouded in mystery and everything is obscured. And uh, the very power of Dumavati is obscuration. She obfuscates. Okay? Nothing is clear. She's smoky. She's of smoky origin. Nothing is clear. And in, in the text, she is portrayed as ugly, an old, a widow, a crone. Uh, the female has three cycles, okay? Main primary cycles, the male, female. The maiden, the mother, and the crone. The maiden when there is no menstrual cycle, all right? When we do Kumari Puja, then the menstrual cycle starts and we become the mother. I mean, of course, now because of our cult culture, the, the, the socio-economic situation, right? Yes, of course, no bad, no bad stuff. As I said, Tantra is not about, uh, you know, doing bad stuff, harming anyone, uchatan, na. It's a waste of time. Souls will get caught in all this nonsense. Why do you need that? You don't need that. You don't need to control anybody. You don't need to do maran or chatan on anybody because, you know, this is infinite. These cycles of death and regeneration and death and regeneration. And who holds the key to the mysteries of this? Dhumavati. And Dhumavati is no different from Kali, no different from Tara, no different from Sorashi. So when we visualize Sorashi, we visualize her as Bala, who's a little child of nine. Then she becomes Sorashi, the maiden, resplendent in her youth, beautiful as Sorashi. Then she becomes the mother, Bhairavi. She becomes Tara. She becomes Kali. And ultimately, she becomes the crone. And it is an inevitability for all of us. There's nothing to be afraid of. And in that crone state, her skin starts sagging, you know. Because all those lines in her face hold years and years of experience in them. So there is nothing to be afraid of the crone stage or ultimately all our menstrual cycles will one day 
culminate, they will finish. And the time when we could give birth wraps itself up and we become the crone, right? And, and society is, we are so, um, you know, ageist, right? Ageism. You have to be young, you have to be beautiful. That is nonsense. For what would we know without the great grandmother Dhumavati? Nothing. And I'll tell you why. Why is she nothing? I'll tell you that. Why is she associated with all things inauspicious and poor? I'll tell you. Now, when you talk about all things inauspicious, right? Anauspicious. What are you doing? You're contrasting things. Again, when we think of auspicious and we think of inauspicious, what are we doing? We are creating a contrast. We are uh, creating a, a segregation, right? Yes. Uh, no matter how old our mothers and our grandmothers will be, they will forever be beautiful. Their youth, uh, you know, the, the, remi the reminder that they were young, that is us. Because we are fractals of them. Again, we will be old one day. And we shall look uh, upon our grandchildren as a fractal of our youth. So this is how it goes. It is a cycle and it is never ending. So why not embrace it? Why not accept it? Right? For the crone is as beautiful as the little girl. The little girl is as beautiful as the mother who has given birth to that little girl. Right? Thank you. Now, uh, when we come around to discussing Dhumavati, in the text, she, is, she carries a winnowing basket and is on a horseless chariot riding a crow. And a favorite place is the Shanal grounds. She loves the Smashan. There is a timelessness in the Smashan. And Dhumavati is the very epitome of timelessness. Yes, yes, please light a dia, go out like in your balcony or just take a walk down if you have some kind of old tree and hold that old tree and just say Dhumavati Mata, I love you. You can always say, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. That Hawaiian prayer always works with everything. You can just say, sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. And today for those people who, holding, who are holding some kind of mother problem, grandmother problem, some kind of mother wound. It's a very good day. For our grandmothers are very special. You know, in India we say, nani ke totke. That means uh, the grandmother's uh, remedies. And we live, even today in India we follow grandmother, of course, hasti pisasi lige swaha. It means Salutations to the Great One who is in communion with Uchishtamatangi. So, has, and who is Uchishtamatangi? The Great Pisachi herself. And no Pisachis are not demons. Okay? Many, you know, I would say it's a mistranslation over the years that Pisachis have become demons. They're not demons, they're cosmic beings like Ganpati's Mahayaksha. Uchishta Ganpati is Mahayaksha. Uchishta Ganpati loves the Dasha Mahavidyas. So today, Uchishta Ganpati is super active, right out there, saying, Yo, world, what's up? And we all can light a diya to uh, Dhumavati and in our altar. And we can always say that, uh, Mother, please bless, bless us. Uh, okay, so the, the crematorium. The, the Shanil grounds remind us it's a place where time stands still. It's a place where emotions are heightened. Uh, you can totally use uh, Dhumavati, you can use Bagala. As I said, all the goddesses are not different goddesses. They are one, uh, you know, one mother matrix. And we, uh, the ancient tantrics, ha they have tried to grasp this, the infinitude, the beatitude of the, the, the magnificence of this mother spider that spins her web, right? 
Yes, just speak to the mother goddess herself. Oh yes, this is the time in Kali Yuga. In Kali Yuga, yes, Bala, of course. In Kali Yuga, Shiva says himself in um, Mahanirvana Tantra that the Tantra is the most active, the quickest path to gain salvation, to gain knowledge. So the Dasha Mahavidyas and in any kind of worship in the Tantric way gets you speedy results. Because this is not Satya Yoga where you can do Vedachar and expect the same results. This is the time of Tantra. This is the time of the left-handed path. And I don't mean Uchatan, Maran or uh, Stambhan and all these kinds. When I say the left-handed path, I mean worship the Goddess through the left-handed path. And the left-handed path is fraught with danger. The right-handed path is straight out, you know, wake up in the morning, do your argas, do your right-handed rituals. In the right-handed path, the women are not even allowed to say Om. They, they can't say Om, Namo, Bhagavate, Ekadam, they have to say Namo, you know, the women can't say Om. So, and if, uh, if you are not a Hindu Brahmin, pretty much Vedachara becomes uh, irrelevant, right? Because you are not included in the equation. It's not an inclusive system. But Tantra is all inclusive. You can be an American, you can be a Somalian, you can be a Swiss person, you can be a German, you can be a Slovakian. It does not matter in Tantra. You are known by your spirit. I love you because of your spirit, because we speak the language of Tantra, we speak the language of the left-handed path of the Goddess. So there is, um, yeah, of course, you can always take Dakshinamurti, uh, who is a, a version of Shiva, and you can take Ganpati, Uchishta Ganpati, he is the Tantric Ganpati, and you can ask them to be your Guru, and you can start on your own. I mean, you won't be on your own because the Chishta Garpati will be guiding you. So, Guru or no Guru, I mean, yes, of course, without Guru, you don't understand all the intricacies. But if you truly are ready, then what you need will appear. What you need will appear. Again, who you need will appear, right? So yes, go ahead. And may Dhumavati Mata bless all of us. Dhum, Dhum, Dhumavati Swaha. And, and today is a day where I feel extremely charged with her energy. That's why in spite of, you know, like really working hard all, all day, Dhu, yes, Dhu. It's a stress, Dhu, okay. A lot of people will tell you, oh, you can't do this or you can't do that. But remember, Hinduism is not a religion. It is a way of life. It is a, it is a philosophy. And Tantra can be practiced by anyone from any religion. In fact, the, the Muslims also practice Tantra. It is called Ismaili Tantra. The Sikhs practice Tantra. The Jains practice Tantra. Christians also practice Tantra. Right? Many of the rituals, especially the, 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 uh, you know, the Eucharist, and many of the, the Christian Gnostics especially, knew the true uh, religion of Tantra. Who is Sophia? Sophia is Kali. Sophia is Tara. Sophia is Dhumavati. So Dhum... Dhum, Dhumavati Swaha. Now, uh, the thing is that when does Dhumavati manifest? Dhumavati manifests during the cosmic dissolution. That is why she swallowed Shiva. Dhumavati has no consort because the crone has played all the, the games of courting, courtship, romance, marriage sexual exploration, the crone is, is complete in herself. And, and according to many texts, Dhumavati 
swallows up Shiva. What does that mean? That Dhumavati causes dissolution. When everything ends, what was there before the Big Bang? Can any scientist tell me what was there before the Big Bang? There was timelessness. And there was Dhumavati. That state of the cosmos before the Big Bang. I told you Bhuvaneshwari puts the bang in Big Bang. But what was there before the Big Bang? Can you please give me a reason? What was there before the Big Bang? Nothing. And that nothing is Dhumavati. And when we speak of nothing, our dualistic minds, we can't grasp nothing. It drives us crazy. There has to be something. What the Buddhists call Shunyata. The Dashama Vidyas are ultimately cosmic powers that we try to say they are mothers. Okay? Because the Tantrics, especially, uh, they, they wanted a personal relationship with the deity. The deity is not somewhere up in the sky, you know, judging you on Judgment Day and throwing, hurling you down uh, in the in pits of hell. No. The Tantrics wanted to associate themselves to deity. They wanted to feel close to deity. They wanted to love deity. They wanted to awaken deity inside. So thereby the personal relationship in Tantra with the deity. There's nothing impure. Oh, yes, Kamakya, book my PDF on uh, Devi Kamakya because 19th, 20, 21st are Ambubachi. And in that book, you will get a lot of information which will bring you closer to Devi Kamakya. And again, a little message for all the people that have booked. Please, if you can, send me a reminder because now it's like about 22 people and I, I, I can't keep a track. But please, I need more people. So please consider uh, supporting the work I do by booking, pre-booking. It's not yet ready. So, when does Dhumavati manifest? Before the cosmic pralaya, when Shiva starts dancing, you know, not Anandya Tandav, the Tandav of creation, but destructive Tandav, then everything must end. The cessation of every single thing. The cessation of Trimurti, right? When Shiva starts playing the Damru, Thumavati swallows Shiva. For everything must come inside of her all the multiverses. I told you there are infinite multiverses, infinite Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwaras. So what does Dhumavati do? She dissolves Shiva as he dances the Tandav and the storms of Pralaya are brewing. Dangerous thunder and lightning of cosmic proportions, right? So this, this part, this, this energy of Dhumavati can be equated with a super void. Many say that, you know, before the Big Bang, there was a super void, what the Buddhists call Shunyata. Okay, many say that uh, before the Big Bang, there was a, a ginormous, super massive black hole. And what was there before the black hole? That is Dhumavati. What is Kali? Kali's black hole starts churning everything like the black hole that she is and creates time, gives us the fourth dimension. And then through Kali comes Tara, the Adya Spanda, the final vibration, the word Logos. It vibrates and that Spanda percolates down and starts pegging down four corners. That is Hreem, that is Bhuvaneshwari, right? So, and Lalita Tripura Sundari and the Sri Chakra is the holographic, the holographic uh, representation of the multiverses, right? So, then Bhuvaneshwari starts expanding 
the inflatron, 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 the, the process of inflation. Space starts expanding, expanding rapidly, rapidly, rapidly. And deity observes, Shiva observes the expansion as Shakti. So Dhumavati appears in this dance of Pralaya and swallows up Shiva, swallows up all the multiverses in a bubble. Okay, that's why she can be so scared. Super voice can be scary, right? Uh, the, the, the divisiveness that our minds portray, oh, I'm beautiful, she's ugly, or oh, that's beautiful, this is ugly, or this is hot, this is cold, right? All of this. Uh, this, this divisiveness is, you, we need to go beyond it, right? We need to go beyond it. And this is the energy of Dhumavati, beyond dualities, beyond uh, uh, night and day, sleeping and waking, you know, beyond all of this, birth and death. What is beyond it? What is beyond it? Can we even grasp what is beyond it? Okay. All of this is superficial, superficial, beauty, uh, ugliness, death, birth, superficial. What is beyond it? And Dhumavati propels us inside. The journey is inside, the swallowing up of Shiva. Right? Inside. Inside are the infinite multiverses pegged in our body. For we are Dhumavati. For we are Shiva Shakti, Ka Kameshwar and Kameshwari in union in the ninth Avarana and the Sri Chakra. We are, we are it, we are the truth, we are the beauty, we are everything, right? Now, on a mundane level, worship of uh, Dhumavati gives Dhum, Dhum, Dhumavati, Swaha, gives us supernatural powers, Siddhis, uh, rescues us from all troubles, right? Grants all, like worldly desires, riches, fame, celebritydom, all of that, kingdoms, right? But ultimately, she grants moksha. She takes us, she destroys the concept of samadhi. For what do we know? Than, uh, you know, what, what do yogis, what, what, what does everybody want? You know, the more spiritual people. They want nirvikalpa samadhi. Dhumavati breaks the concept of samadhi. There's something beyond that. And she defeats all foes on a mundane level, external foes, on a deep level. So on a mundane level, foes are external, but on a more symbolic, esoteric level, the foes are internal. Our constructs, our social ide you know, conventions, our concepts, our conceptual you know, meanderings, this is what you know, these are things are our real enemies. As I am giving you this lecture right now, there's a crow, I mean a family of crow, uh, sitting right there. And they're kind of listening. What is beyond Samadhi is, uh, yes, beyond Samadhi, only Dhumavati can tell you. So when you chant, Dhum, Dhum, you can also just do beat chanting. In your mind, you will understand what is beyond Samadhi? But you have to be graced by the Goddess herself. So, I mean, I'm just a mundane person, you know. What do I know about Samadhi? Last of all, what is beyond Samadhi? But, you know, in a, in a, in a sense, grasping it intellectually, I can see that there is something beyond Samadhi. There is, there is. You know, also from the heart, uh, there is something about the power of Dhumavati that will take us beyond Samadhi. So yes. Now, however, most people don't worship Dhumavati. And uh, many Tantrics, they try to perform all kinds of Uchata and Mara and all these things. It is said that if if, Dhuma, if you can do the Kriya, kriya and Prayogas of Dhumavati and uh, some burn a crow in the 
in the, you know, crematorium fires. Some eat a crow, some use parts of a crow in the ritual. And then through the, the, the ritual is infinitely more complex, but I can only just tell you that the crow is used in, part, in many parts and the Dhumavati's Yantra is drawn. And it is said that she loves blood and human corpses. She eats them. Why does she eat them? Simple, because she brings about dissolution, pralaya. What are human beings if she can swallow up Shiva? She eats Shiva. Why does she eat the blood and the flesh? Because she brings pralaya. It's time for us to go. It's the Manvantara is over. A new cycle must begin. begin. A new cycle has to commence. And our time is up. That's why Dhumavati chews on corpses. This is the real meaning of why. But many people take this literally. So many tantrics, they use Dhumavati's energy. Can you believe it? Uh, okay, now, as I was saying, that many tantrics do Uchatan and Maran rituals through the crow. They burn the crow in the pyre, in the funeral pyre, right? So many tantrics, if they gain that power, you know, many, many of them do. And they, they're always hungry for power, you know, they want power. I say, people who want power, like, well, why do you want power? Right? Yeah, exactly. Why do you want power? What's it going to do to you? Make you waste your time even more? Right? Why do you want power? Many tantrics, they, when they uh, do this special ritual, they can enter the crow. And we've seen this happen in Game of Thrones. When that little kid, what was his name? Brandon. Brandon Stark. Brandon Stark, he was actually a realized master. We, we get to know that, right? When Brandon Stark, he uh, has this initiation, he falls down, he becomes, you know, a, a cripple. Then he's, he becomes a third-eyed raven. What is a third-eyed raven but not channeling the power of Dhumavati? For an ancient text, it is said that when a Dhumavati sadhak wants to come and see you, they will come through crows. They will enter the mind of the crow and they will go into your vicinity as the crow. So many tantrics, they like really powerful tantrics who are Dhumavati sadhaks, you don't see them. They don't see the light of day. They are only, you know, they're in Himalayas or deep in the forests or in crematoriums, right? They go in, yes, they go in to the, uh, the mind of the crow and they penetrate the enemy's fort or house or whatever through the crow, they can keep an eye on you, like eyes and ears on you. That's what many, many Dhumavati sadhaks, proficient ones, they can do that. They can enter into the mind of the crow. And we know crows are super important. <laughs> super important crows. Uh, and they are really, really intelligent. Do you know that an average crow has the intelligence of an eight-year-old human child? Did you watch this documentary when a crow had to solve something like a 15 step problem to get a treat? And it did perfectly like that. Zip, zip, zip. Crow is smart because they have the power of Dhumavati. They know intelligence and, and the Dhumavati sadhak kind of manages to intermingle their uh, own consciousness with that of the crow. So Brandon Stark is the three-eyed raven was actually channeling the power of Dhumavati. These uh, Dhumavati tantrics, right, they can enter the minds of, of the crows and they can, even a group, one tantric in, 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 in the, in, you know, they can penetrate the mind of a group of crows. It's crazy how they do it. It's crazy, and my, and my Guru Deva has actually seen he can do it because you know he's a para tantric, he's a param tantric. The videos, as in I said, crones. Remember crone, the the woman in whom menstru um, the menstrual cycle has stopped. They are the most powerful channelers of Thumavati. So if you have a grandmother right there, you can always uh, touch her feet and think of her as Thumavati Mata. And you can just make, make a set an intention. 
So she's seen as all things, like I said, you know, widows and all all things, you know, spacious. And in fact, in India, we have this stupid, stupid custom where widows are not allowed to come into a wedding. I mean, not in Bengal. Bengal, it's all okay, a okay, because you know, in Bengal, yes, in Bengal, uh, the widows were being burnt everywhere in India. That was called sati. And it was Ra Raja Ram Mohan Rai and Ishwar Chandra Bidya Shagor who stopped this Sati thing. It was Bengalis. And Bengali said, widows will get remarried. If that is not, you know, uh, yeah, ag, I know. And they said, Raja Ram Mohan Rai and Ishwar Chandra Bidya Shagor and uh, Ravindranath Tagore's father, Darukanath, Sati was actually a thing. And they stopped it. And that is a power, that is the power of sons, daughters, daughter and, uh, uh, grand, grandchildren. How dare you say that? You know, how dare you say that? And these kind of things piss me off. Uh, yeah, men are very scared of wise women. They hate them. They hate them. I, I, I've seen that. I, I've seen that. I get so um, many disparaging uh, remarks. It's it's disgusting. They're always trying to either sexualize me or trying to control me in some way, especially spiritual men. It's uh, ugh, as I said. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So how dare they burn Thumavati Mata? How dare they say Thumavati Mata cannot enter? Right? All the widows, all the widows, may they be blessed. For so many of them are being burnt, tortured. Because now what? The sons and daughter-in-laws, they want the property to so burn them. Yeah. So this is something that I have seen. Oh, a woman is talking, what does she know? Oh, yeah. Especially in India, a lot of men have this attitude that when it comes to spirituality or religion, a woman does not know anything. And I grant them this, that in Vedachara, they truly don't know anything because women are not even allowed to say Om. They can't even say Om. Can you imagine that? But the, the Tantrics say, you are a woman, you are celebrated, for you are Shakti. You are a widow, you are celebrated, for you are Mata Dhumapati. So see how Tantra is all encompassing. And, and not only that, Shiva told Shakti, told Sati, that worry not, Parvati. If a woman guru initiates the, the mortals in Tantra, they, there will be no doshas, even if the woman guru is illiterate and knows nothing about Tantra and Mantra. See, today, uh, today Dhumavati Mata's day, no weird comments on my life. See, this is the power of the crone. And I'm excited to be a crone one day. I'm excited for when my menstrual cycle will stop and I can finally let my hair grow gray and embrace the lines in my face when they come, right? There. Embrace it, embrace life, cry, laugh, hug one another, you know, for you never know when all, all of this is over and Dhumavati Mata swallows you into nothingness. For when the world can be obliterated just like that. We are here with a very special mission to observe consciousness, to observe each other. We are here to, yes, yes, yes. Please read my book on uh, Kamakya Mata. It's a deeply personal book. And uh, those of you that are interested to know about my spiritual journey, a lot of it is available in that book. So please take time and please, um, Drop me an email for $11. It's nothing, okay? Yes, that'll be so amazing someday. So that is the difference between Vedachar and between the left-handed part of Tantra. 
Gantra says, come mother, uh, to any woman, come. You are white, you are black, you are Hispanic, you are Chinese, you are Japanese. Just drop me an email. No, it is uh, a PDF. So it's digital. It'll be, I'm still working on it. It'll take me about uh, two, three more days and I will finish it off. And today I can't because again I have another live and I've got um, stuff. So today no, but please drop me an email if you want to purchase it, please. Okay, now let us get back to our discussion. Dhumavati Mata is in Varanasi, which is Banaras. Okay, Banaras is now known as Varanasi. And in old day, in, in ancient times it was known as Kashi. Okay. Yes, it is quite interesting. I promise you that. It was known as Kashi. So Kashi, uh, I've actually got an article on this, on Kashi, Varanasi. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. Peruse my blog. This is so, so, so much out there. So in Varanasi, Mata Dhumavati is the protectress. She is very, very auspicious. And, sh and many texts, actually many scholars and many tantrics, they have tried to find out where did Mata Dhumavati appear in the Dasha Mahavidyas. So many have equated her with Niritri, the Vedic Niritri, and Jeshta, the eldest. Interestingly, the next update of mine is on Jeshta full moon. So stay tuned for my next live, which is again in some time as I finish this. Now, Jishta is dark, ugly, and loves crows, just like Dhumavati. And she hates suspiciousness. Why? Because then it makes a distinction between what is suspicious, what is inauspicious. She being the eldest, she realizes that there is no such distinction. It is created only by our ignorance. And has a bad temper, Mata Dhumavati has a bad temper. But I mean, after all, you know, when you become the crone, you tend to have a bad temper because you don't want to stand for anything. You're not playing any courtship games. You're not looking for approval. Or someone says, hey, you're hot, you're sexy. You don't give a shit. You know, when you become the crone, being the crone, you know, it, it, it comes with a certain power. You know, you're not bothered about society and what society has to say, well, fuck it, get out, right? And if people try to talk shit, you will lose it. You've seen grandmothers, they tend to lose it. You piss them off, they lose it, right? Now, uh, in, in many cases, she can also be equated with Alakshmi. Alakshmi, who is the uh, kind of like, yeah, uh, uh, kind of like, you know, um, Lakshmi and Alakshmi. Lakshmi sisters are Lakshmi, right? So all of these deities, Niritri, Jeshta, Alakshmi, Dhumavati, they symbolize hunger, thirst, need, poverty. Why? Because our human minds can't grasp nothingness. When we think of nothingness, what do we think of? Oh my God, nothingness, no food to eat. Because our physical bodies need food. Right? Thirst, we are thirsty, but there's no thirst in dissolution. There's no thirst in going beyond creation. That's what our dualistic minds cannot comprehend. When do we need Lakshmi? When we need something, we need Lakshmi, right? Okay, now her literal name Dhumavati. It means she who abides in smoke. In Shakti Samgama Tantra, it is said, when Sati committed suicide by j jumping into the fire, right? You know the story of Daksha Yagya. In, the, in, in, in Daksha's fire, she created, she jumped into the fire and performed self-immolation. She immolated herself, right? It is through this Sati suicide that Dhumavati arose from the flames, face blackened, right, black face, right? This is the wrath of Dhumavati, right? And Dhumavati is all that is left of Sati. Sati was outraged and insulted, right? And, and Dhumavati is, and Sati is perfection, Sati is Shakti, creates. 
and when Shakti performs self-immolation, it is Dhumavati that remains, the, the widow. But she doesn't need consort, she doesn't need the masculine, right? She's not looking to create anything, Dhumavati. Why is she a widow? One time Sati asked Shiva for food. She says, can I get some food? So Shiva was possibly busy or I don't know what exactly was going on. But Shiva was like, no, I, I can't make food right now. And that's it, right? Sh Sati kind of became huge and devoured Shiva. When Shiva was inside, he was like, oh my God, please, can I, can I be let out? Please, please, can I be let out? Right? When Shiva was inside saying, please, 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 let me out, let me out, let me out. So she puked him out, like regurgitated him out of her stomach. That's when Shiva cursed her. She's like, oh my God, you just ate me because you were hungry. I'm not going to be with you. You be a widow, right? Bam. Now, so that's why Dhumavati became a widow. Now, also in Pranatoshini Tantra, Dhumavati's hunger is, is satisfied only after she consumes Shiva. The cause of everything. It is Shiva, right? So once you consume Shiva, nothing remains. There is no Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara. Because Shiva in himself holds the Trinity, the Trimurti. Now, why does she need no consort? Because she is latent energy. She does not looking to create anything. A grandmother is not looking to have another baby. Now, as I said, Dhumavati is the ultimate terminator. Okay, the ultimate destroyer. Why? She consumes Shiva himself. Gali dances on Shiva's chest, but Dhumavati went one step ahead and consumed Shiva. No creation, no nonsense, dissolution. Must train. But the Manvantara is over. All right? Now, she is an older form of Kali. She is the unmanifest potentiality of Kali. She's timeless, timelessness. Timelessness. Okay? Now, cosmologists are saying that in the early inferno, right, 13.8 billion years ago, all elements that make the world as we know it, right? Formed in 12 minutes. 12, the 12 signs of the zodiac, interesting, right? Now, they also say that the Big Bang happened from nothing. Nothing. Nothingness. The, this absolute nothingness from which the Big Bang originated, this is Dhumavad. Dhumavati is negative energy space, okay, in thermodynamics, okay, so thermodynamically speaking, a state of absolute cohesion of space, absolute cohesion. Randomness happens only with the Big Bang. Bhuvaneshwari brings that Big Bang, the bang in the Big Bang, and that is when randomness occurs. But before this, we have uh, uh, Kali, time, time starts moving, Tara, Dadya, Spanda, the word, the Logos, Bhuvaneshwari, the Big Bang. But before all of this is a time of absolute cohesion of space. This is Dhumavati. There is no randomness in Dhumavati. Now, some say that a supermassive black hole created uh, the, the Big Bang, some say uh, the Big Bang emanated from a super massive void. What created that void is Dhumavati. That is the energy. Okay, I told you Kali is the, the black hole. Kali's energy is a super massive black hole. Now, uh, so why is she associated with all things poor? Because what do we understand as the riches? Light. For what are riches? Light. But when Dhumavati exists, there is no light. Please, guys, put timestamps because you know, people just come to this video and I honestly don't have the time to get on, get on and start timestamping it. Uh, like I said, Tantra is not like over here.
I give you a video and you learn everything off it. No. Make it a participatory activity. Participate. Learn. You can write little notes as comments on my videos. What have you studied? Do you agree? Do you not agree? I'm always open for discussion. This is how we grow the knowledge base. So look, at, look upon this channel as, 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 as a sort of tantric university, astrological university. And you're not students here. We are all actually students if you want to look at it like that. But let's look at, look at this like we are all actively engaging and participating and creating something. Yes? You don't have to be into Tantra, it's just whatever is interesting. If you find something interesting, you can put a timestamp and you can say, okay, this is what I found interesting, that is what I found interesting, stuff like that, okay? So I am going to head off, but I will be back again. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, ah, yes. Please consider becoming a member. Yes, 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 yes. I would be doing a very special tarot reading for all those guys who are who come to my channel for tarot. Please come, Osho Center. If if you don't know it, it's a really uh, it's kind of like a flagship tarot. It's amazing. It could be love, relationship, tarot. But no, um, honestly, for 12 signs, so what I will do is I'll pick one card from the Gilded Tarot deck, which is actually one of my favorites. And then I'm going to choose one from um, the Osho Central. So see you exactly in 10 minutes. I think, I, I don't know, I may have a change. I, I don't know. It's... I had to wear black because Dhumavati Jayanti. Let's just keep it simple, nice, and uh, of course, a lot of psychic energy coming up. So, thank you so much, and uh, see you soon. Take care. Bye.